Ron Paul, Boston edition. If you couldn't tell by the music, I'm Charlotte Wilder with Amino Hassan. As always, we're coming to you from the DraftKings headquarters. From Dad's house. Yeah, we're at Dad's <laughs> house, and he has amazing snacks. Dad is a, yeah, that's incredible, man. I want I I don't want to go back home to mom anymore. I want to live with Dad now. I really like. I really like it here. The studios are are beautiful. It's a long long time coming that we come and do a show and go to a Celtics game. I legitimately told Charlotte I don't want to leave, and you guys know how much I don't like Boston. Yeah, but between Charlotte Wilder and the DraftKings headquarters, it's mostly the DraftKings headquarters. I've seen Charlotte Wilder before. Okay, all right, moving on. (laughs) This is Uh, amazing. Speaking of Boston, I mean, we're gonna play a game called Wicked Smart. Wait, are we gonna do just Boston themed everything for this whole episode? Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you ever think it was going to be anything different? Uh, I could try to do a Boston accent this whole time, but I think I would offend an entire city. Would New York? All of them. Every city. I'm going to put my status jacket on and talk about Tom Brady. That actually wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Um, okay, Tom, so Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Um, speak wicked smart. Uh-huh. Wicked smart. We got to do some math. It's the time of year where NBA fans are doing playoff math, yes. trying to figure out what seed their team's going to be. Are they going to fall to the play and blah, right. blah, 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 blah. And we have some hypothetical math problems mm-hmm. here because it's really fascinating how much things can change given what happens. Right. Um, are you ready? We're going to start. I'm excited for this. This is this is a fun time of the year because people are always asking, well, how can my team end up? with the best possible seating. And so we're going to actually break all that down in a little game format. We're going to see almost a quiz show. Wow. Ready? What is it called? The Buzzer? Yeah. Jeopardy? Yeah, it is. No, I don't think that's not math. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. I mean, your first question, uh, hypothetically, if we were to have one Nuggets loss, Mm -hmm. two Thunder wins, Mm -hmm. and two Timberwolves wins, what would that equal in the seedings so the nuggets lose t wolves win out thunder wins out minnesota's the number one seed mm, i'm sorry that is not right that's <laughs> not your fault <laughs> that is incorrect to me is that is, is that a boston thing <laughs> uh yeah no that's a charlotte thing i can't put that on anybody else but me uh no that would mean that hypothetically the thunder would be the number one seed because the way it works when you get into all of this is it's the head to head, but it's also the divisional record. The Thunder have not lost to another team in the West. They've lost to the, in their division, right. Spurs, but 18 and one means that they would have the top spot. So they'd be the top dog. So when, when it's two teams, it's head to head, but when you expand it out to three teams with the same record, and I believe it turns into the win percentage of the three teams playing against each other. And that's why Oklahoma City is one. Mm, okay. Sure. I'll take your word for it. Okay. Well, how about this? Okay. I'll, let me let me throw one to you. Okay. What if? Um, okay. Yeah. What if the Knicks mm-hmm. win the rest of their games, including the night against Boston, the game that we're going to be going to? Okay. And then the Bucks. Lose the rest of their games. Um. Oh, that's easy. Then the Knicks get the second seed in the West. You're absolutely correct. I was easy. I was, I was, I was way to softball one to get you started. Thank you so much. Um. No, I mean it, it's fascinating because the Knicks have three games to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're currently a game and a half behind the Bucks. Yep. I don't. Did anyone see them be like? I'm still shocked. That they're in third in the East right now, just given where we thought they'd be at the beginning of the season. Well, no, I'm not like, look, the OG third is very good. Third is very good. The OG Ananobi deal changed a lot of things. Right. right? And we all knew when they acquired, I'm like, OK, this is a big move, big time move for them. Mm-hmm. That uh, January where they went 14 and two. I mean, that that really shot them up the, the standings. And then since then, they've been having to make do. Julius Randle gets hurt. OG Ananobi gets hurt. Mm-hmm. They can do another trade there. They get Miles McBride out of there. And they bring in the, the corpses from Detroit. But oh. it, it's like they were kind of flirting around. I'll be honest with you, Charlotte, if Milwaukee Milwaukee collapsing is what's allowed this to happen. Yeah. For them to, to the Knicks even be in, the, in a position to be two. The fun thing, obviously, is if you're the Knicks, where about a week ago we thought they'd be four or five, mm-hmm. and now you got a chance to be two or three, is now 
you don't have to worry about seeing the Celtics potentially until a conference finals. Right. Matchup. You're now on the other side yeah. of the bracket. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what happens tonight because obviously the Celtics don't have much to play for because no. they already have the number one. Everything's seed. locked up. Yeah. But I'm interested to see what they'll do or who they'll bring out. Or I, I feel like Joe Mazzulla is a kind of coach will be like, I know this game doesn't matter, but I'm going to contest shots anyway. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or unveil maybe some stuff that they might. Pull in the playoffs. Yeah, practice. Yep. That's what yeah, because he wants to yeah. practice during games. That's right. Um, okay, I have another one for you. Uh-huh. You ready? Two heat wins mm-hmm. and two magic losses mm-hmm. and two Pacers losses equals. Two, wait, two heat wins, two magic losses, two Pacers losses. I, I think the heat, it doesn't matter what happens. They're going to be seven at best. So I think this is a trick question. I think nothing. What happens is the Pacers. Uh, you're not correct. It's not your fault. I, I, what, what's that? I like doing the sound before the sound happens. Is that no. Robin Williams? Yes, obviously it's Robin Williams. Okay, Chief. All right. Yeah, uh, come on. Get what all right, what's the answer? Coming. So the answer is that the Heat make it out of the play-in because they are two oh. games back of the Magic and the Pacers, and all three have two games Left to but the, the Magic can't be a playing team, can they? No. Okay. So, all right. All right. Cool. So, the Heat, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I, last year, everyone was like, the Heat aren't going to do anything. Mm. They're in the play in. Yep. People forget they lost their first game and to, then to a bad Atlanta team. Yeah. A very bad, and then almost lost to the Bulls. They were down double digits in the fourth quarter at home against the Bulls in a do-or-die elimination situation. And then they made it to the finals. NBA finals. It's so the this, weirdest thing. This team, I mean, but I just don't know how to talk about the Heat at this time of year. This this is the problem, right? Like, everything that we look at, that you usually look at, is like, is this team a team that's going to do things? This team has been 500 over the last 20 games or so, right? Right. This team has had a bottom third of the league offense bottom third in the league, half-court offense for most of the year. Yeah. Like, it's nothing here indicates. And by the way, their record, even though they've got a good record, they're terrible against great teams. Yes. It's really built on beating up on bad teams. Yeah. I've been to a zillion Heat games, and the thing that happens more often than not is they just don't have the talent. Defensively, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. But then, like, Against the Nuggets, like against the Sixers, like all these games keep coming to mind where it's like the other team says, you know what, we got starts like against the Mavericks right. last night. You know they they were up, they're down big, they make this comeback in the fourth quarter, they cut it to single digits, and then the Mavericks are like, oh yeah, we got Luke and Kyrie, right, and you don't. You can like see the other team remember, right? Like, oh, yeah. sorry, we have superstars, right exactly. Now. Not that not that Jimmy Butler doesn't show up, but, but he hasn't been showing up. Not, I'm not saying he can't. I'm not saying he won't. But if we're looking at the body of work this season, more often than not, they run out of gas offensively. They just can't score points at will like other teams can. So everything logically, Charlotte says, <laughs> hell no, they're not going to make a run. But this is exactly how we felt about them last year. And and they made an incredible run. So I don't, in good <laughs> conscience, I can't be here and be like, no, count the heat out. No, same. Do who like how much of an advantage do you think it would be to Spo to know who they're playing earlier, or is he the kind of coach who just like? No, it's a massive advantage. It is. It's, this is a staff that prides itself on preparation and uh-huh. game planning and and the adjustments. When you make adjustments in a game, they're not ideas that hit you in that right. moment. They already know if this happens, we're going to do this. It's almost like a flow chart. If yeah. this, then this. If not, then that. And so that's why if you see. A lot of coaches have this, but Spose is pretty detailed. That sheet that's tucked in his in. back pocket. Yep. So it, it's that's what I thought he was like reading the menu for what he's going to order ah, after the game. It's like a, a cheesecake factory menu. All right, Charlotte, I'm going to give you a harder one now, right? Because okay. the first, the last one I gave you was just too easy. What if the Kings lose out and the Warriors and Lakers both win out? So you got two Kings losses, two Warriors wins, two Lakers wins. I mean, this is child's play. That means that both of the Warriors, both the Warriors and the Lakers can make it out of the play-in. Hypothetically. That's that's correct. I know. Uh, and now, I'm really good at this. I've been saying that I'm bad at math. 
this whole time just to throw you off the scent. This is yeah, this is where it comes in. You finally kick it in. Uh, the n- either the nine seed or the ten seed can escape the plan to make the playoffs, but not both. Yes, but in this scenario, the Kings would slide to the ten seed, which would push the Warriors and the Lakers up to eight and nine in either order. And then the Kings have the tiebreaker over the Lakers and Warriors, so both teams would need to yeah. pass them outright. And then that's right, bada bing, bada boom. That's right. Like so, yes, there it, it can't be tied with either of them. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's really. I mean, it's, it's like I'm a genius all of a sudden. Um, but the Warriors are are locked into the playing tournament um, because the Suns beat the Clippers yes. 124 to 108 last night. Yes. Because what a concept. Uh, Booker, Beal, and Durant all decided to play well together. Well, I mean, the, the flip side of that concept is Harden, Kawhi Leonard, mm-hmm. Paul George, Russell Westbrook all decided not to play. Which, like, hey. Having your guys available, that's a big, like a great strategy. Mm-hmm. Having the other team not have any other guys available, that's an even better strategy. Yeah, it's a really good If you could just go through strategy. the entire playoffs, like, could you not play Luka and Kyrie? And, uh, Tatum, no. Yeah. Uh, Jokic, absolutely yeah. not. Um, who, between those big three, if they, when they, were, mm-hmm. if they were to play against each other, who's your, what's your money on? The Clippers, uh, and it's tough because obviously the Suns have talent. I just feel like the Clippers' talent fits one another a lot better. Mm -hmm. The Suns have a lot of duplication. And I know they've went all season long telling us they don't need a point guard and they're smart. But it's when you have someone whose job it is to do something, it's always better than someone who you're asking to do that job. Mm -hmm. So a a simple way to put it is if you ask me to produce this show, I could. It's, It's not something i'm incapable of doing but is that the best use of my talents is that and am i as top of mind with many of the the job responsibilities probably not right so we have producers who do the job because that's what they do and that allows us to do what we do which is look good on camera which is smile and wink um i actually i i completely agree with you i think that the Suns, to me, have never felt like they really knew what they were doing. Like, you know how Logan Roy in succession is like, you're not serious people? That's sort of how I felt about the Suns all season, which isn't a very nice thing to say. And it's also not fair because they do have some great players. But I feel like it, before the season, I mean, when you and I were, were talking, doing shows, being like, what do we think is going to happen? It was like, well, and then there's the Suns who, you know. Booker and and Durant and then you had Bradley Beal and look how great they are. It it was always just assumed that they would be better than this. I yes, for many people, they better than this. Yes, but I knew they wouldn't be, or I felt like it wouldn't be massive success. For it wasn't even about that. I didn't realize the health would be such a huge issue. That right, they'd play less than half the season together, all three of them. I thought the bigger issue was everyone else on their rosters. Like all those guys, they filled out their rotation with were minimum salary guys, and. The way to do minimum right is to get people who could have made more elsewhere but decided to take minimum. Mm-hmm. The way to do minimum wrong is to get people who were going to get minimum wherever they were going to be. And that's what the Suns did with their roster pretty yeah. much because that's all they had available to them because of all the salary tied up for the victory. So if the Suns aren't a scary team on the lower end? Of- well, they are scary, though. See, that's the thing. When you get to the playoffs. So they are scary. They are scary, but not scary enough to be a one or two or three seed. As we saw from the season. Who are the scariest teams in well, the well, Okay, before we get to that, I do want to give you a real brain teaser. Right? Okay. Okay, what if the Clippers win out? Okay. The Mavs split their remaining two. The Spurs beat the Nuggets. Okay. The Bears draft Caleb Williams. <laughs> the Tigers hit the under on their spread and Abbott Elementary wins a third Emmy why not have they won two or three hold on let me look this up literally none of that matters because the Clippers and the Mavs are already locked in in the first round of the West to play each other 
what's going on here? I, like, like I, I feel like this is the best you've ever been at anything involving math. You, we've struggled with counting to ten before. All right. Uh... I, my cover's been blown. I mean, the answers were on that chalkboard behind you this whole time. Just the whole time. They've just been, you could have turned around. You could have got them all right, too. <laughs> just like right up there. Anybody could see it. Who wrote this? Powers of Observation. I don't know. Probably like some janitor. We, we had this the whole time? Why the hell did I get a cheat sheet then? Well, maybe you should be more observant. Coming up, we'll be back with a game called Odd Couples. Is it on the back of this? I, I just love, I, I, I said this to our producers the other day, I love royalty-free versions of songs you already know. He lives for them. And so every time I hear one like that, with, uh, we're not going to say what song it's supposed to be, but... It makes me smile endlessly. Uh, Charlotte, we're in Boston. The music, the theme, the drunk leprechaun behind us uh, at the DraftKings studio. We love it here. We're never leaving. You're going to have to pry us out of here. Well, not with your cold, dead hand. Yeah, no. we, uh, Workshop right. that yeah, one. Working but on Charlotte, that. the Boston themes don't stop. We've got yet another game to play. As a welcome home to you, we're going to play a game called Odd Couples. Oh. Basically, we're going to take seemingly dissimilar mm -hmm. Celtics icons mm -hmm. and pit them against Boston icons. And I'm going to ask you, like, okay, is it this or that, right? I was born for this, kid. Oh, geez, that accent. Uh, better duo, mm -hmm. Tatum and Brown mm -hmm. or Affleck and Damon. Oh. Now, now Tatum, oh. and, Tatum and Brown, they've had 450 win seasons together, right? They've been to the NBA Finals. They've been to the conference finals four times, right? Uh, they had the best record this year, uh, you know, uh, in the league. And most importantly, they're neither of them are 30 years old yet. It's crazy. They're, they're both 19 years old. Mere children, they've right? They've been doing this for seven years. On the other hand, Affleck and Damon have an Oscar. Yeah. They won a best screenplay for Goodwill Hunting. And they've appeared in 14 movies together. Okay, so there are a few things here about this matchup that might not be fair. Mm -hmm. Jason and Jalen are still in the middle of their careers. Yes. D Damon and Affleck are too, but they're older. They've been doing this longer. I feel like maybe they've made more movies than they will make, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, God, and I just can't, I can't believe that Tatum and Brown, seven years. Yeah. It feels like... Oh my God. Um, I, I will say though, I, duo wise, mm -hmm. I feel like obviously Tatum and Brown don't have the hardware. Right. Damon and Affleck do. Also, though, I don't know that Tatum and Brown are talked about in as much of a duo, like mm -hmm. sidekick, like they're together way. Than yeah. Damon, like Matt Damon, you, you, I say Matt Damon, you say. Ben Affleck. Right. Yeah. I say Jason Tatum. You say maybe in the MVP conversation. No, you know, I, like, I say Deuce. Right, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Deuce is more of a sidekick. Son. <laughs> um, so I think I just have to give it to to Matt and Ben, although yeah. I hope that I hope soon that changes. Well, I mean, this is what I'm going to say. Like, you've seen Air, right? Yes. Loved it. You don't need an Oscar, Brown and Tatum. Just give me an Air. Give yes. Me, give me something that well, makes me feel good and smile and and oh, they're back. The boys are back together. Again. Yeah, but I think Air is like the Eastern Conference Finals again, oh, and again, and again. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't hate an Oscar. Okay, give me a Duncan commercial where you guys are wearing. It's funny, like neither Tatum nor Brown is a Duncan spokesperson. Yeah, I know. I or, would like or to Charlotte be, Wilder. Thank you. Like I would hello? like to be. I have DM Dunkin' Donuts in every possible social media app, being like, "Can I have a tracksuit?" Like I am just I'm late stage capitalism. We're in it. I'm gonna wear it. Dunking's tracksuit, Ben I, and Matt. Also, Ben and Matt, come on the show. I just want a sponsorship. Like, I'll take, yes, I'll take money. That would also be nice. All right, next one for you. Better defender. Defender? Defensive person. Defend. Defender. Defender. Drew Holiday. Uh-huh. Or Paul Revere. Paul Revere. Now, some background here, okay. some, some stats. Yep. Drew Holiday last season was named the best defender by other players. The Athletic did this whole poll mm -hmm. of NBA players, and they voted Drew Holiday as the best defensive player. Uh, meanwhile, 
Paul Revere warned Bostonians about British invasion before the battles of Lexington and Concord. This is a very easy one for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is no question. Drew Holiday, by a mile, forever. First, really? of all, first of all, he has made such a difference for this Celtics team. As much as I love Macus Smart, he just, he, the Celtics are better with Drew uh -huh. playing defense. Uh, he, 135 million for four years. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Like, how do you feel about that? Because people forget, nine months ago, this dude was talking about, maybe I'm going to retire. Yeah. And now he's locked in for four more years, 33 mil a year. I mean, I think a huge part of this was the salary cap. The Celtics, if he, his annual salary is now yes. lower than what his option was. Yeah. So the Celtics are like, sure, we'll do this. And then we can try to be under one of the luxury taxes or aprons or chef's hats or like whatever <laughs> the league has. And and the reason I say that Drew is hands down a better defender than Paul Revere, Paul Revere got captured. People forget my hometown, Lincoln, Massachusetts. He made it that far. And then they got his ass. Well, the other thing also is like, I think there's been exaggerations of, how far he rode. He didn't That's ride. what I mean. Lincoln is like 12 miles yeah, away. Yeah, like he's like, people think of him as like this huge marathon that he ran. The marathon whatever. is longer than yeah. Paul Rivers' yes. ride. No, and he was on a horse. Uh, so, yeah, Charlotte Drew Wilder. Holiday doesn't get to play on a horse. For the record, Charlotte Wilder hates freedom. No. Uh, oh. Next one. Well, look. <laughs> next one for you. More. Was Silversmith. Was he? Yeah. He made the seal of the state of Massachusetts, I believe. You learn something every day on Oddball. Mm -hmm. All right, Charlotte, more overqualified co-star, Kristaps Porzingis mm -hmm. or Mark Wahlberg in The Departed? Oh, wow, that was such a Departed? Mark Wahlberg in The Departed. Departed. Uh, All right, so how's your KP is, <laughs> Sorry. is averaging... Uh, a career high in points per possession. So he's mm -hmm. incredibly efficient. Obviously, his numbers are down from where he was last year in Washington because he doesn't have as many opportunities. And, and I would say, argue that a lot of their defensive kind of like excellence this year has more to do with him and Derek White than it does Drew Holiday, okay. even though Drew Holiday obviously does a good job as it's well. It's like up there in the perimeter. Now, meanwhile, Wahlberg got a nomination, an Oscar nod, for Best Supporting Actor as Sergeant Diggum. Oh, God. I... And he's a proud son of Boston as well. Yeah. He's also weird. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Chris Tapps. I No. I don't even understand the question, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, but I think I'm, yeah. I'm more into Chris Tapps Porzingis this year on the cell. Well... Mark Wahlberg in the department. He got an Oscar nod. Oh my God. He, he didn't win it, but he got the nod. nod. He was amazing. Can I can it be a tie? No. We're doing we're, this is we're DraftKings. Chris Stapps. Okay. All right. That's your final That's answer. My final answer. All right. So I, I do have to point out that Sergeant Diggum finished the job though. In, in the department. Yeah, maybe Chris Stapp's going to. Okay, we'll see. How about that? Wait to see. Yeah, wait. All right. I'll give my verdict after the finals. All right, Charlotte, we've got a lot of these. Okay. Uh, Hit me. The producers went into overdrive. I'm so okay. psyched. Better architect, uh -huh. Brad Stevens or Bill Belichick? Ah, oh. uh, Bill. For now. But not only that, but also like think about it. Like in retrospect, like how much of it was the architecture if it was all just Brady? Well, no, it was a lot of architecture because yeah. he when here's the thing when I met Gillette with my boys and we're talking about this, it's definitely. The, the roster that Belichick designed was just like unbelievable. People forget he won championships with lacrosse, D3 lacrosse players. I just think that he does not get enough credit for putting this team together, for giving Brady the weapons he needed. Brad Stevens, win one and we'll talk. Brad, I got your back, man. I, I think Brad is actually doing stuff. Yeah, All I right. know. Brad, Brad's really good. I just needed to get that off my chest. Better bald Bostonian, Derek White or Bill Burr? Oh, well, Bill Burr has been balder for longer, but I think I want to give this to Derek White because it was really brave that he shaved his head this season. Bigger green behemoth. Luke Cornett or the green monster? Oh, <laughs> this is remarkably stupid. Sorry, Luke, the green monster. It's literally a green wall. Thicker. Clam chowder or big baby? Uh, big baby. <laughs> Better at harnessing and organizing resentment in a productive manner to re affect rebellions. Celtics fans or Sam Adams? Not the beer, the actual dude. Celtics fans. We'll see you at the game tonight.